Okay, let's see what else we can do with this new formula of ours. We've got energy equals mass times specific heat times temperature change. And now they give us a block of ice, one kilogram block of ice at minus 25 degrees, warmed by 35 kilojoules of energy. And they're asking for the final temperature. So what do we know here? The total energy, they say, is 35 kilojoules, which I'm going to write as 35,000 joules. Now that I've used joules here, I'm committed to working in joules and grams for my masses. If I had written kilojoules there, then I'd be stuck working in kilograms for all of my masses. So you can use either one, but be consistent. Either use both of the kilos or neither. In this case, because I said joules, I have to say grams. So one kilogram I write as 1,000 grams of ice. Now the specific heat, this is still H2O, but when it's ice or, if it's ice or steam, the specific heat actually changes. There's a table in the textbook on page 336 that gives a bunch of specific heats, and it includes water. There's the 4.19 that we've been using, and that's water liquid. Just below that, they have water gas, as in steam, and just above that, they have water solid, as in ice, and they say it's 2.00. So that's the specific heat you have to use for an ice cube. So, specific heat 2.00 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the temperature change, well, we don't know what that is. That's what we're having to find. So, uh, we can multiply the thousand and the two. We have 35,000 equals 1,000 times 2 is 2,000 delta T. I'm cheating on the units here, but they'll be back in just a moment. Delta T, to get it, to get delta T, we divide both sides by 2,000. And so delta T, 35,000 divided by 2,000 will be 17.5 degrees Celsius. That's how much the temperature goes up. Now, let's give our specific, or significant digits they're due here. This mass had three sig digs. This energy had only two sig digs. And the specific heat we looked up had three sig digs. So our answer can only have two significant digits. We're held back by the two that this number had. We have to round this to 18 degrees. We round up because this digit's five or more. So our delta T is 18 degrees, which means the ice will warm up by 18 degrees. It used to be at minus 25 but now it's gained 18 degrees, so now it's at minus 7. Our very cold block of ice is now a pretty cold block of ice. All right, what's going on with this next one? They give us three materials here. They're saying we have 100 grams of moist air and then we have 100 grams of water, and then we have 100 grams of ice. And we're putting 100 joules into every one of them. It's like we're putting each of these on a hot plate and cooking them all for the same amount of time, or we're going to see which one heats up the most. So let's see what we can get done here. The same formula will work for all of these things. Energy equals mc delta t, and I'm going to write that three times because we have three different samples that we're playing with. mc delta t, energy equals mc delta t. If you're writing q equals mc delta t, no problem. We, we both agree that that means the total energy, or the total enthalpy. So, for moist air, the energy is 100 joules. The mass is 100 grams. Now we need a specific heat for air. Does the textbook give us one? Aluminum, carbon, copper, gold, hydrogen, iron, ammonia, ammonia, ethanol, water, 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 air. They don't, they don't do dry air and moist air or anything like that, but they say air is 1.01. Let's see if that's enough. Hopefully the, we don't need too much precision here. So the specific heat for air is very nearly one. And from that we can get a delta T for it. Uh, let's see, 100 
equals 100 times 1.01 .01 is 101 delta t. delta t. Then we divide both sides by 101, and we get delta t is, I feel like it's going to be 0 0.99 something. 100 divided by 101, we get 0 0.99 degrees Celsius, very nearly 1 degree for air. Now we get to do that again for water. For water, it's the energy is 100, the mass is 100, the specific heat for water is 4.19, and then we have our unknown delta T. 100 equals 419 delta T. So now our temperature change is 100 divided by 419. Zero point, about a quarter of a degree. Zero point two four degrees. And one more time for ice. For ice we have, we're still putting in 100 joules equals the mass is still 100 grams. The specific heat for ice, you can look up, it's water solid, it's two on the nose. 2.00 and we have our unknown delta T. 100 times 2 is 200 delta T. Divide by 200 and we get delta T is exactly half a degree. So, which substance will experience the greatest temperature change? We get a quarter degree for water, half a degree for ice, and almost a full degree for air. Now, could we have figured that out without doing all the number crunch? Yeah, we could, because the delta T depends on how much energy there is, and that was the same for every substance. The mass, which was 100 grams for every substance, so it came down to which one has the highest specific heat. If you have a high specific heat, like water, which has one of the highest, your temperature does not change very much. If you have a low specific heat, like air, your temperature changes more easily. So the specific heat C is like your heating resistance. The higher that number is, the more your temperature tends to stay put. Water with a high specific heat, its temperature doesn't change all that much. Air with a low specific heat is easy to heat up or cool down. So we could have eyeballed this if we had a good intuitive grasp of what specific heat means. High specific heats like water mean you're stable, you don't change temperature very easily. Low specific heats means your temperature swings a lot, it's easy to heat you up or cool you down.